What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. What you're seeing in front of you right now is the most realistic SA-10 strike mission that I have ever put together. And today we're actually not going to be flying this mission, we are going to be training to fly this mission. Now let me explain what I mean. This is going to be a mission that me and my friend Spartan Pilot are going to fly in a future video. It's going to be a low level uh, strike SA-10, uh, be utilizing just the two F-8 18s, limited assets and we're going to demonstrate how it's potentially possible to defeat an SA-10 using a combination of harms, decoys and JDAMs. This is going to be a very very challenging mission because as you can see we are going to have a realistic front line and let me show you very quickly what that looks like in the mission editor in DCS and we're going to have a bunch of other threats as you can see there's a number of SA-6 sites completely controlling this airspace not to mention the SA-10 itself controlling the airspace. Um, so we're going to be committed very low level here using terrain masking as far as is physically possible. Uh, it's going to be a high threat environment with multiple other um, SA-8s, SA-18s, AAA potentially and so on and so forth. So the name of the game is low and fast. We're going to ingress. Uh, waypoint 1 here, low level, get into waypoint 2, which is approximately 60 nautical miles from the SA-10 site, at which point we are going to climb up uh, above the mountain range, get some altitude, potentially up to about 10,000 feet as quickly as we can in full burner, get the tiles off, the decoys, to start confusing and saturating the SA-10. We're then going to dive away, notch any potential missiles coming at us from the SA-10 site, go low level, as low as we possibly can, and then recommit again with a little bit of altitude get the harms off both of us and then we're going to do repeat the process dive down low level notch any potential missiles and then after this point with about 13 nautical miles to run it's going to be complete flatlands at that point we're going to continue in towards the SA-10 and do a lofting maneuver lofting two JDAMs on the two radars the Big Bird and the Flatplate radar. After that it's going to be egress at low level over the sea and get out of there. Now as you can see this is going to be a real real challenge so what I thought I should do um, before we actually fly this mission is prepare for it and the way we're going to do that is fly this mission that we're doing today which is a training mission over the NTTR. So let's have a look. Okay, so welcome to the NTTR and today's practice mission to attack the SA-10 using the exact same profile that we'll be flying in the real mission over Russian territory uh, in a future video. So we are going to be operating in range 74 Bravo here. It's just to the west of the so-called container of Groove Lake or Area 51 as it's called. And what I've set up here is as a realistic training mission as I possibly could. Now. You might be wondering whether or not this is a realistic setup, i.e. the Americans actually having an SA-10 over in the Nevada desert. And I would argue that yes, it probably is. And I suspect that yes, they do have an SA-10 site and almost certainly have been practicing uh, with it. An SA-10 in this case in particular is not a particularly new system, it's from the 90s. I think they will have these radars at least to practice with. Um, now, the way we set this up is they're not going to be any launchers today. Uh, or at least no launchers that can launch on us. This is going to be pretty much mimicking what the US Air Force might be able to train uh, their pilots uh, in real life on one of these ranges. So we're going to have the Big Bird radar and we're going to have the Flatlet radar. Uh, both located here at uh, an imaginary airfield that the US is built in the middle of the desert and I've uh, built a little mission here with a container city next to it as well. If you want access to this mission file by the way um, please feel free to check out my Patreon and if you're willing to uh, contribute and become a Patreon supporter then uh, you will gain access to this mission and every mission going forward including the, um, the actual mission we'll be flying uh, in a future video. So I have tried to mimic this route exactly um, simulating the route that we'll be taking over on the actual mission that we'll be flying over Russian territory so it's going to be uh, action waypoint here at 16 nautical miles before the SA-10 site. Uh, it's not going to be able to shoot at us here so just uh, this is literally doing it as realistic as we possibly can. We'll be flying at 250 feet in the actual mission will go down of course as low as we possibly can in between the trees because that's going to be necessary. At action uh, we're going to climb up above this mountain range. We've got some terrain masking until about 13 nautical miles which is exactly the same way that what's going to happen in the actual mission for the last 13 miles is going to be flat terrain 
Uh, so there's, there's not going to be any terrain masking after that. Um, here at 60 miles we pull up, we'll uh, drop the tiles off here uh, just over, as we pass over the mountain range here and uh, we're then going to uh, notch any missiles approximately 90 degrees, use any terrain masking, dive back down uh, and then get the tiles to fly a little bit and uh, potentially distract the SA-10 or, or start saturating it. We are going to recommit with two harms again with a little bit of altitude um, at approximately 11 nautical miles or so and then once again notch any missiles get low level into this um, flat terrain this valley and then uh, follow that at super low level well in our case here 250 feet until we get to approximately just under 8 nautical miles and then perform a lofting maneuver at 20 degrees to launch two JDAMs at two separate radars um, on the airfield here, the imaginary airfield. Uh, we're going to attack both a flatlet radar and a big bird radar at the same time in the same lofting maneuver, after which point we're going to make a hard 180 diving back down to the deck and evading. So it's a pretty ballsy mission. Um, it's uh, I don't know if this is exactly the way that would fly in real life. In real life, they probably have multiple packages uh, doing all sorts of jamming, harms, oversaturating it that way. Uh, but we are pretending that we've only got limited assets, and this is the way we would do it. Um, so if you have any better suggestions, uh, then uh, please make sure to comment down below. Uh, but before you do, watch the video and see how we get on. You're clear to disconnect the headset. We'll see you on the left with the pin. Thanks a lot. All right, then here we are, folks. We are in the jet, just doing a nice gentle turn around the Rachel Farms here in a beautiful morning. Autopilot's engaged, auto throttle's engaged, and let's fence in. So let's set your jet up, and we're going to go air to ground mode. Straight away, go to H side, right hand side. Uh, let's do sequence so we can see where we're going. Zoom in slightly. So waypoint one here initially, that's going to be the action waypoint. Waypoint two and waypoint three are our two targets, the SA-10, and then egress. So, let's set up the weapon systems first of all. Nothing to set up for the tiles, they're just point and shoot. Let's go to the harm. Uh, we're going to do pre-briefed, we're going to go UFC, and we're going to go to target and type in code 110 in our case, and we're using that up the knee board there that you see. So, SA-10, code 110, flatlet radar. Also, for the actual mission, the wingman will be going for 104, which is the big bird radar. So that is set up, we're going to go harm pull up mode because uh, we're going to be well within range so it's not going to be about getting maximum range for the harms, they're going to have no problem, so harm is fine. Uh, let's go back to stores, get the JDAM aligning and go to target of opportunity mode, uh, instantaneous fusing, then go to mission display and go to waypoint 2, waypoint designate, so now you see a, a a bunch of coordinates here that is going to correspond to waypoint 2 which is the flat lid uh, tracking radar now we need to attack two targets with two bombs in the same lofting maneuver so what we're going to do is waypoint 3 the next waypoint is going to be the big bird um, target and uh, as soon as we loft our first bomb we're then going to select waypoint 3 and waypoint designated immediately and then pickle that second bomb off now I know some of you may notice that we've got two TOOs that we can pre-program before the attack run. So we could in theory go to waypoint 3 now and then just simply waypoint designate that as well so to have another set of coordinates. Then drop and pickle the first bomb, switch to TOO 2 and pickle the second bomb. Now unfortunately, I don't know why and I suspect it's because we have two bombs on the same pylon. I believe that is the problem because every time that I've tried that and I went to TO 1, and pickled my first bomb off, the waypoints for waypoint for tar TO2 just disappear, and then I have to redo the whole thing from scratch. So we're gonna do it in my workaround way, um, but like I say, if you guys know of a better better solution of why that's happening, then please let me know. We could also do pre-briefed and actually manually put in the coordinates, but that takes too much time, and uh, there's no point, because we've got waypoints over those designated targets anyway. So let's go EW on the bottom, and let's go dispenser into bypass. Um, the uh, let's have a look at our alignment quality now. Uh, zero three good. So uh, by the time we get to the target, it'll be fine. So let's 
uh, reverse the turn here and head towards waypoint one, which is the action waypoint. We're now fully fenced in. Uh, in the actual mission will be lights off. In our case, lights are going to remain on because we are simulating an actual training mission in the Nevada Test and Training Range. All right, let's accelerate uh, to 500 knots at least, and uh, max dry power, or full military power if you're American. Uh, let's go in to Radalt, uh, aiming for 250 feet. And uh, Groom Lake off to the left-hand side there, the container, which we're not going to bust, so don't worry about that. We've got the belted mountain range coming up ahead here, uh, with belted peak just off to the right-hand side, so let's go turn the HMD on. Now let's, uh, we got zero 01 good for the alignment there. Um, now let's go into Talz. And we're gonna punch in the burners. We're looking for 16 miles. That's going to be the action waypoint where we start to climb up and get our decoys off on in the general direction of the SA-10 to start confusing it and oversaturating it. So here comes 16 miles. Talz are selected, 40 degrees nose up. We're now 10,000 feet, roll inverted, back in towards the SA-10. Now don't worry, it's not going to fire straight away, it needs to start tracking you, so we've got a little bit of time, so let's pickle one, wait a little bit, two, wait a little bit, and three. Now the SA-10 has probably started tracking us and potentially fired on us, so let's dive down, and we're going to start notching the missiles. So let's start uh, dropping some chaff. We're going to start descending 250 feet at 90 degrees. Now we're going to use this uh, terrain cover as well. And uh, 90, we've just overshot slightly, but we had to go in behind the mountain, so that's fine. In the actual mission, we'll also have uh, some terrain masking at 13 miles. Let's go to Harm now, and it's all set up, so let's start to recommit towards the SA-10. Get a little bit of height for the Harm. Again, the SA-10 will start acquiring us now and probably start firing on us very shortly. Let's align the asthma steering line nicely here. Magnum. Magnum. Okay, and it's probably going to... probably would have fired on us now, so let's uh, start diving down. 250 feet, 90 degrees, here we are. Dive it down, dive it down, full burner still. Trimming it to the right now, because we've got asymmetry. Uh, let's go back to stores, JDAM, display, mission, to make sure the coordinates are in there. We're at 11 miles, looking good. Let's recommit, staying nice and low. Drop a chaff, drop a chaff, drop a chaff, looking up ahead. Here we go. Staying nice and low, and the actual mission will be as low as we possibly can down in the dirt, but here we'll try and maintain at least 250 feet. Looking for just under 8 miles to start our pull-up maneuver to get enough loft. There we go, about 20 degrees nose up. And waiting for the in-zone queue to settle, looking in the HSI, here we go. And there we go, pickle, second waypoint, third waypoint, waypoint designate, and pickle bombs away. Get the chaff out, 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 chaff out. Maximum speed, egressing, using terrain masking as far as much as much as is physically possible, and any evasive maneuvers that are required of the SA-10 are still tracking you. And of course, like I say, in the actual mission that we'll be flying over deep into Russian territory uh, in the Kerch Peninsula. Uh, we are going to be down in the dirt, in between the trees. Uh, but in this training mission, of course, it's 250 feet. So, we are coming in here uh, for the action waypoint, waypoint one, uh, to climb out and get the decoys off to try and distract the SA-10. And by the way, this is a sort of mission that I created uh, that I thought where uh, this would be the most effective way of defeating an SA-10 using the combination of weapons that we have available to us, especially now with the decoys. And I don't know if it is the most effective way, but I have been thinking about this tactic for a while. And if any of you have any better tactics or know what the military might do, um, 
then of course please let me know. I, of course I understand in real life you would probably approach this potentially a different way because you'd have a whole bunch of aircraft uh, as we're actioning here climbing out to get the towels off. Um, you might have a whole bunch of aircraft saturating the SA-10 with a whole bunch of harms, but uh, we are talking about limited assets. In other words, what if it's only a few aircraft that are at your disposal and this is what you've got to do. So in that particular scenario, I believe this is how I would do it. And I don't know if this is the military's way of doing it, but if you guys have any ideas, please make sure to comment down below. So we got the tiles off there. We're now notching the missile, potentially, if it's coming at us. Of course, it's not in this training mission on the NTTR, but it will be in the actual mission, I'm sure. Using a little bit of terrain masking here to our advantage, and we're going to recommit uh, with the harms. Now, the reason you didn't want to fire the harms straight off after releasing the decoys is because the harms will then fly ahead of the decoys, and the SA-10 will, of course, just prioritize most likely whatever is the closest, biggest threat. The fastest thing coming towards it and the closest thing coming towards it is probably what it's going to attack first. So you don't want to do that. So you want to give a little bit of um, leeway. You want to give a little bit of time for the for the decoys to start uh, distracting the SA-10. Here we've got our harms off. And once again, we're notching the missile and diving down for the deck. And uh, in testing this mission a few times, I've tried it. Um, with this profile that I do where I launch these harms at this altitude in this range, they seem to not really hit targets that frequently. They're, I mean, they're close. They're probably enough to distract the operators of the SA-10. But as you can see, uh, they haven't really hit the targets. And quite frankly, it doesn't really matter too much because actually um, in real life the SA-10 was probably almost certainly going to shoot them down which is why we've got the uh, the bombs right because we want to effectively um, have a sort of checkmate scenario in the end uh, in case the harms don't work which they often might not um, for all sorts of varied reasons that uh, the radar might get turned off or whatever as you can see our notch here took us a little bit further out to 11 miles now there's a chance that maybe this was a slight mistake it gave the operator of the SA-10 a little more time to actually track us um, and potentially kill us but uh, so maybe you could probably stick a little closer to that 90 degree line so we've lofted both of our bombs here in my testing I can tell you you do not want to be any further than eight miles away uh, if you're gonna do a loft at 20 degrees uh, you really don't want to be more than eight miles away because it's uh, these bombs are not the most accurate um, in this sort of profile. At high altitude, when you drop them, it, they're easy. I mean, it's guaranteed 100% accuracy, but um, at this sort of profile, you'll see uh, that they are, sometimes they fall a little short, um, so you really want to be at least eight miles when you initiate that pull up. But the more energy you have, of course, the better. Um, and uh, in this particular case, you could see both bombs are tracking both of the radars here, and it's looking like a perfect hit on the Big Bird and another perfect hit on the flat lid. So there you go. If you have any better ideas about how to approach this sort of scenario, try to kill an SA-10 side, especially, I mean, the reason we're doing it this way as well is potentially this other, uh, like SA-19s or something, um, protecting the SA-10, right? So you don't want to get too close. Um, so this sort of lofting profile gets you the sort of best case scenario. Of course, it's a risky, 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 risky mission. Uh, no question about it. But if you had to do it, I'd say this would be the way to do it. But like I say, if you guys have any better suggestions, please make sure to comment down below. And if you want access to this mission file, uh, then please consider supporting me on Patreon, where for a few quid a month, you can gain access to all my missions going forward, including this mission, which I shall put up, and uh, feel free to download it. And there's also a nice container city down here as well that you could be using for your realistic training uh, targets and uh, JTAC missions, etc. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Please make sure to smash the living daylight out the like button, subscribe for future videos, make sure to check out my new website for buying and selling aircraft wing list. We've been growing rapidly, which has been fantastic. Uh, please tell your friends about it in the aviation community. But otherwise, I shall catch you in the next one. Adios.